so you can follow the vehicle as she crosses the Atlantic. Basically, what's going to happen is this. Following liftoff, the powered phase of the Soyuz's first three stages will last about nine minutes. Then the upper composite, which is called the frigate upper stage, with Gaia aboard, will be separated, and the three lower stages fall back into the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean. Frigate carries out two powered flight phases. There will be two burns. We'll get back to each of these as they're happening. So you can follow the mission as Soyuz heads across the Atlantic. We're going to go inside the fairing now. We're going to take a look at Gaia. Go ahead. Uh, in the fairing, Gaia does not look uh, the same as in, in its operational condition. The payload and the service modules are hidden behind the sun shield, which is during the launch in its folded configuration. Stop. One minute. We're in the final moments of final countdown for the sixth Soyuz to fly from French Guiana. Excitement here has been high all week, as you can expect. Another of those moments now as we approach liftoff. A tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top, décollage. Soyuz lifting off beautifully from French Guiana, beginning her 1,813th mission and her sixth from her new home here. Fine shots, always impressive, no matter how many times you see Soyuz powering into the sky over French Guiana. Now, you know it's been raining all week here, but the sky's cleared for the liftoff just this afternoon, giving us a fine view of things, as you can see. We're heading east, all out over the Atlantic. All is uh, perfectly, is perfect on board, Amy C.P. is saying. 313 tons at liftoff. That's less than half the mass of the Ariane 5. Remember, Soyuz is complementary, not a competitor to Ariane 5. She's lifting Et one satellite, a payload weighing two tons. Ariane 5 can lift 10 tons. The boosters and the second stage are burning normal. now. The boosters, there are four boosters, they make up the first stage. The boosters weigh 45 tons each. Total mass 178 tons. The second or the core stage is similar to the boosters. Its ignition occurred on the launch pad, as you saw. All is normal on board, the DDO is saying. We're coming up on separation of the boosters. That's uh, something you'll probably be able to see because the visibility is so good. And you'll hear Amy Sip call out, that looks like the separation. See the four boosters, the four points of light falling away from the main point of light, which continues to burn, which is the second stage. And the DDO has called out confirmation of the booster Tous separation. Les à bord sont Everything functioning beautifully. You can see the boosters twinkling on the left-hand side of the vapor trail there as uh, Soyuz continues her journey eastward across the Atlantic. The boosters will fall back into the Atlantic. Coming up on separation of the fairing in about a minute, that's the next uh, milestone. You're watching the final area and space mission of the year. It's the 40th payload for ESA launched by area and space and the 25th satellite dedicated to science and the study of the universe. The third area and space launch for ESA this year we launched one each of the Ariane family, Prova 5 on Vega in May, ATV 5 on Ariane in June, and tonight. And Timo is back. You are grinning from ear to ear. How was it out there? I hope I can speak. It is such an emotional moment. Really? <laughs> Seven years working on the project, and you finally see her leaving the Earth? Yeah, and it was like uh, rising the sun, and you get first a light, 
and then you see the separation of the of the boosters. You saw separation of the boosters and because we saw it here on the screen. It was very clear, and it was yeah. also visible from the balcony, and, and they were twinkling like, like uh, small stars. <laughs> it was impressive. And uh, the noise? The noise was coming later because we are, of course, uh, quite a distance uh, away from the. Yeah, you get the delay. You get the delay. So, 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 what impressed you the most? It was the light, I guess. Huh? I think it's the light and also the speed. We uh, separate the lower stage before igniting the upper stage. Soy is just the opposite. You saw that third stage ignited two seconds uh, before. We have enormous cameras on board and we make uh, huge images, but uh, we cannot get all the data down. So what we have to do a decision on board that to send only the relevant scientific information of the stars and even that is not enough. We still have to compress the data and decompress it. So who, who makes track. that decision? That is a uh, uh, evaluation of balancing that what is uh, scientifically relevant and then we have to optimize. Uh, like tonight's had one reburn, but the second launch in December of 2011, you can see the engine shutting down there, uh, was a much more complex mission and it, la it launched six passengers and it required four burns in all. As, as we mentioned, this uh, new version of the frigate can burn up to 20 times, which uh, means we can have very complex uh, missions. So there is also a problem of uh, computational speed. So it's also computer experts. We're waiting for confirmation of the second frigate ignition, which is due up in about five seconds. But again, with the telemetry uh, delay, which again is normal, uh, th there it is on the screen. So you see the scheduled time of the ignition was right on time. And uh, we'll have confirmation of that probably in about uh, 10 or 20 seconds. Second frigate burn lasts about uh, 15 minutes. Uh, it is an orbit which is around the L2 because the uh, advantage of L2 is that it's uh, gravitationally very stable, so you can keep the spacecraft easily uh, around with uh, little consumption of uh, fuel. But if you would be exactly on the spot, of, you would be always in the shadow of the Earth, and that would not have any energy. We're coming up on the end of the second frigate burn. There you see she's shutting down right on time. Due at 36 minutes and 59 seconds. During, uh, uh, the vehicle is now at uh, 873 kilometers altitude, roughly. I don't know if the figure, but have, I got, have I got the same same figure? Well, that uh, again, with the telemetry delay, you see it on on, on the left, roughly. The point I want to make is you see how high she's climbed in the last 15 minutes, and you can see it on the screen, on the upper screen, you see she's just going practically vertically. At the beginning of the burn, she was at 173 kilometers. She's gone 700 kilometers in such a short time. That's the purpose of these burns, as you mentioned. With 20 seconds to go, again, this is one of those moments of high concentration where everyone is here. I won't ask you what you're feeling, because I can Imagine what you're feeling. At ESOC and elsewhere, today represents years of work for some of the people here. So the mood is very focused here in Jupiter. Although most of the people have gone through this before, it's still an intense time. We're waiting for the confirmation to come in on uh, Gaia separation. The uh, confirmations have been coming in. Separation du satellite Gaia. There you are, with about a 10 second delay. That's more or less what we had. There's the good news. Soyuz has successfully separated her passenger Gaia. So what are you feeling right now? Do you mind my asking? It is a nice feeling. It is, has all gone very fine so far, so I'm happy of this one. So from the tenth minutes just moments ago, you can see the change here in Jupiter. You heard the applause, very buoyant all across the Space Center as Gaia is pushed away from the mothership beginning her life. All across the Space Center and at all the points and posts where people are working or following the launcher, like at ESOC, as we mentioned, but there are many, many other places. Gentlemen, distinguished guests, <coughs> it is always a special feeling for I and Space to hear the Range Operations Director announce spacecraft separation. Today, this feeling is intensified by the nature of the payload that the Soyuz has just delivered to orbit. Indeed, 
Gaia will take a census of about one billion stars with an extraordinary precision that exceeds not only the dreams of ancient astronomers, but also goes beyond the performance of its predecessor, Hipparchos, launched by Ariane 4 almost 25 years ago. Make no mistake, we are at the dawn of revolu revolutionizing our understanding of the history of the Milky Way. Today's launch is the sixth Soyuz launch in French Guiana. It is the latest in an unbroken series of flawless commercial and institutional missions for various applications, ranging from navigation to Earth observation, from telecommunica telecommunication to space science. These accomplishments clearly show that the Soyuz is a living legend and the most versatile launch vehicle in the world. Today's launch is also the fifth Soyuz launch from the CHG dedicated to space science for ESA and CNES. I would like to praise the Russian Federal Space Agency, Roscosmos, today represented by Mr. Railov, deputy head of Roscosmos, for its support to Ariane Space in its primary mission, which is to give to our institutions the access they require for developing applications useful to us done on Earth. Congratulations also to our prime contractor, TSSKB Progress, who provides the three-stage vehicle and the fairing, and to NPO Lavochkin, designer and manufacturer of the Fregat upper stage. You all form part of a dream team, which is the art of the successful partnership between Russia and Europe, which began more than 17 years ago with Starsem. Of course, I am grateful to ESA for entrusting Ariane Space yet again with one of its critical missions. Gaia is the 40th payload launched by Ariane Space for ESA and the 25th dedicated to space science. The ties between Ariane Space and ESA are now even, even stronger thanks to the full availability of our entire launch vehicle family. In 2013, Ariane Space launched for ESA three payloads, one on each member of the launch vehicle family. Probave in May with Vega, ATV ATV uh, Albert Einstein in June with Ion 5, and now Gaia with Soyuz. Next year promises even more scientific excitement with the last ATV, several Soyuz missions managed by ESA on behalf of the European Commission, namely Galileo and Copernicus, and I can disclose today that we will begin with Copernicus, in addition to IXV on Vega. So again, Many thanks to ESA, to all its member states who funded the Gaia program, to its Director General Jean-Jacques Dordain, who follow us live from Paris this morning, and for sure to Mr. Alvaro Jimenez, Director of the Science and Robotic Exploration, who honors us with his presence today. Thank you. Now you know Gaia has separated and we have acquired direct contact with the spacecraft, so you have uh, put now Gaia in our hands. So this is the beginning of the science mission, and this is the beginning of a lot of work to come in the coming days and in coming months where we are going to harvest the big amount of data that uh, Gaia will provide to all of us. But I would like to use this opportunity to thank, of course, very warmly, Ariane Spass for taking us here, I mean, taking us uh, Gaia to space, and also to CNES, CNES for making it possible, and to our Russian partners for an excellent job being done. This is uh, great, it's a great moment for me, and I also would like to thank very warmly also to industry led by Astrium that designed and developed this beautiful mission. In addition, I would like uh, to remember actually that our member states of ESA, they have been continuously supporting the science program and I'm very thankful to them because it's through that that we can deliver missions like Gaia. With uh, respect to our teams, I would like to thank 
very hurtfully our team, uh, project team, Gaia project team, with the project manager, Giuseppe Sarri, uh, that uh, have been working with this, and they are still working, so it's not the end for them, this uh, getting into orbit, but we will soon also uh, switch into uh, real science operation. A lot of uh, uh, people are involved in that, which uh, are in ESOC, uh, today, also in ESAC for the data preparation. And of course, I would like also to thank them for all the effort they have done. We have uh, still a lot of steps to go through with uh, Gaia, but this is a great moment that uh, this uh, launch was uh, so successful and we are in the right place in the right time. Thank you very much again. <laughs>